Greetings, everyone, and welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Uh, welcome to the sanctuary at Central Lutheran Church in Spokane, Washington. Our guest preacher this worship service is Pastor David Brower Rieke. He's the former bishop of the Oregon Synod and is also currently uh, our um, representative for this Northwest region for Lutheran disaster response. He has imagined his sermon this week as a broadcast on an underground Christian radio uh, at a time when we are not able to be together but communicating with one another via wireless. <laughs> so uh, take that format as you will, find the message for you uh, in this creative presentation of today's gospel text. Um, anything you need for worship will appear on the screen along with you. You can also go to our website, clspokane.org, and download a physical copy if you'd like to have it on hand for meditation throughout the week. We begin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 111, and we'll read it responsibly. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. 
The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now, concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact, many gods and many lords, Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Mom. This is Elder. You there? Come back. Hey, Elder. Uh, you good? What's up? Over. Yeah, we were talking earlier, and you wanted to. You had something going on. You doing okay? Over. Uh, yeah, Elder. I just haven't heard you in a while. You okay? Come back. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Um, appreciate you getting to me. Um, dragon those hands. All right. Welcome to LDR Underground Christian Radio, where the truth matters, Jesus is Lord, and you make all the difference. Today's conversation is about, why should I believe you? A look at who speaks truth, how, how you know, and how you enlist in the fight for what is right. Let's pray. Gracious God, Visit us today with mouths that speak truth, hands that do what is needed, and a heart for all your people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's uh, read from the book and then get to it. We're going to read today from Mark chapter 1. We read, Now Jesus and his disciples went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astounded at his teaching, for Jesus taught them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. And immediately there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of that man. And the unclean spirit convulsed him, and cried with a loud voice, Came out of him. And questioning among themselves, people said, What is this? A new teaching. With authority Jesus commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And Jesus' fame spread throughout the whole region of Capernaum and Galilee. That's the word, my friends. Now, when I became a pastor in 1987, my father congratulated me, and then he said, Dave, there are two kinds of authority in the world. One is granted to you from above, and you wear it on your sleeve. You see, my father was a World War II veteran, and he had spent four years in China. So he was talking about chain of command, right? But the other kind of authority, Dad said, comes from personal integrity. It is granted to you from below. That's why I believe my father felt that pastors and politicians should have. Well, the word today is all about authority. More specifically, it is about Jesus' authority, which is contrasted with that of the scribes, whose authority was worn only on their sleeves. The people were astounded at Jesus' teaching, we read, for Jesus taught them as one with authority and not like the scribes. What was it about Jesus' teaching that gave his words such power. Elder, Elder, this is Finch. You there? Come back. Hey, Finch. I'm doing my radio show right now. Can I catch you later? Come back. Roger that, Elder. I really need to talk to you, though. Maybe when you're done, come back. Thanks, Finch. Absolutely. Give me 30 minutes, and I'm back at you. Over. Sorry for the interruption, but people are important, right? That's part of what gave Jesus such authority. He was there for people when they needed him. Okay, now, we seem to have in our country, perhaps even in the world, an increasing urgency around this question. Why should I believe you? Who should I believe? What makes you trustworthy? What's the truth? It appears that there may be little trust left between us on some issues little faith in the words of our leaders. We call for transparency, for honesty, and not least of all, 
people of integrity who will actually do what they say and do the right thing. We have seen how power given from above can be abusive, bullying, insincere, and misused. We have seen how fragile trust can be and how quickly we can be disassociated from what makes us uncomfortable. Undoubtedly, those who gathered with Jesus in the synagogue in our story today felt that way about the scribes, those who, as Jesus says later, like to walk around in long robes and have places of honor at the banquets. One might think that the scribes were not among those who actually walked their talk. Elder, Elder, this is Suzzle. You got a minute? I hey, Suzzle, I'm on the air right now. Can I uh, talk to you a little bit later? Come back. Roger that, Elder. Later, no problem. Walk your talk. I really need to talk to you, though. Maybe you can do it when you're done. Nothing okay, else. Suzzle, I'll get back to you. And you rock your walk, man. Over. Yeah, walk your talk. And rock your walk. Jesus, of course, did walk his talk. He cared about the poor, the outcast, and was unconcerned with status. Children were allowed to interrupt him. Let them come, Jesus would say. Jesus spoke truth, even to the extent that it eventually cost him his life. And in today's Bible reading, which is a story from his first public teaching, he not only walks his talk, but he rocks his walk. He does something loving, meaningful, impactful, human. Remember, we just read, just then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you are the Holy One of God. But we read, Jesus rebukes the spirit, saying, be silent and come out of him. You see, Jesus spoke to the lies that possessed that man. And he did that in church. And with the sacred power of truth, Jesus caused those demons to flee. And people were amazed, we read. And they kept asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority, Jesus. How do you feel when you hear the truth spoken in the context of ongoing falsehood? What is the impact of words that you know are spoken with integrity by people of integrity who mean what they say, promise what is right, and do what they promise? A new teaching, authority, a whole new experience. Elder, Elder, this is uh, Dragon. What's going on? Come back. Hey, Dragon. I can't talk right now. I'm doing my radio show. Can I catch you later? Come back. Roger that, Elder. Later. No problem. Over. Okay, Dragon. I'll catch you later. Hey, walk your talk out there, all right? Over. Yeah, walk your talk out there, Dragon. We now have a new president, a new vice president, a differently configured Congress, and political leaders up and down the spectrum in office. We also have a significant percentage of citizenry who has been so deeply embedded in lies that they may not be able to find their way out. I'm most worried today for my children and grandchildren, our kids who have not only had their future stolen from them, their earth, their health, their opportunities, but have also been taught now that you cannot trust those who wear authority on their sleeves. My father did not teach me that. What he taught me was that those with authority on their sleeves were worthy of my trust if they also displayed the authority associated with personal integrity and truth. And if you had that authority, the authority of integrity and truth, you could be a leader in this world with or without the chevrons on your arm. And that's the truth Jesus shows us today. If you 
do not walk your talk. If you display no personal integrity, you should probably just shut up. I mean, it was my grandmother who more or less taught me that. And if you cannot rock your walk, if you have no faith, no calling, no reason to be, no care for your neighbor, no humility, no compassion, you can't lead. But in Christ, we have been called to love our neighbor and to sacrifice for the common good. In Christ, we are called to do what is right and to make a difference. In Christ, we are called to magnify the power of the divine in what we do with our hands and say with our mouths. And when we do, it never fails. When we care, when we advocate, when we do what is right and give thanks to God that we are able to do it, then always, always, people are amazed. And they say, what is this? A new teaching with authority. Lead the way, my friends. The world needs you. This has been Elder on LDR Underground Christian Radio. Talk to you next week. Walk your talk. Rock your walk. Elder Elder, this is MKO4. You there? Come back. Hey, MKO4. Absolutely. What's up? Over. All good. Pretty good. Kind of bored. Over. Yeah, I got it. Well, hey, you hang in there. Walk your talk, sister. Over. Rock your walk. Over.
The service continues with the creed. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us offer to God both our praises and our petitions for all in need, responding to each prayer with the words, hear us and help us. Faithful God, we praise you for sustaining the church during this difficult time. We pray that you give to all preachers and teachers the power of your prophetic spirit, that their words will proclaim the comfort and challenge of Christ. Lead to yourself all those who have become captive to false prophets and empty promises. Free them and embrace them in your mercy, O faithful God, we pray. Hear us and help us. Bountiful God, we praise you for continuously creating the earth and nourishing its creatures. We pray that you restore lands and waters that have been harmed by human misuse. Raise up advocates for an ecological way of life and guide us toward an appropriate use of government in preserving the earth's natural resources. O bountiful God, we pray, hear us and help us. Ruling God, we praise you for an inauguration and the days following that were free from violence and marked by hope. We pray that you would give wisdom to our elected and appointed officials to political parties, and to grassroots organizers, that in all things they endeavor to serve the common good. Guide our nation out of the ways of prejudice and into equity and justice for all. O ruling God, we pray, hear us and help us. Compassionate God, we praise you for each day of health and well-being and we pray for all who are sick or suffering. Comfort those with mental illness or emotional distress, those institutionalized or living on the streets or residing in our homes. We praise you for the development of COVID-19 vaccines, and we pray for their fair and prompt distribution. Increase in our land a commitment to protect our neighbors Visit all who have contracted the coronavirus and all who are experiencing the long-term effects of COVID-19. Strengthen medical workers and home health aides. Receive our prayers for those we name before you now. Brian Alm, Kay Anderson, Jeffrey Ball, Kathy Phillips, Sharon Smith, Waylon Steiner, Don Tulick, and those we name in our hearts. We also pray for the safety and well-being of all those who put themselves in harm's way for the sake of others. O compassionate God, we pray, hear us and help us. Reconciling God, we praise you for your spirit of wisdom and concord. We pray for all who make ethical decisions, whether in homes, in churches, or in societies. Keep families from quarreling over which foods to eat. Instruct us when to preserve the past and when to institute change, when to maintain our own preferences, and when to yield to others. O reconciling God, we pray. 
hear us and help us. Gracious God, we give you praise for your continuous untold blessings, and we offer you now the petitions of our own hearts. O oh, gracious God, we pray, hear us and help us. Eternal God, we praise you for your servants of times past, whose words and actions have inspired our lives and our faith. We mourn those who have died of COVID-19 and all those who have departed us for any reason. Unite us with all our beloved dead, now through our memories and at the end of time in your presence. O eternal God, we pray, hear us and help us. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your loving care for the sake of the one who dwells among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now take a moment to share that peace with anyone who might be worshiping with you. And if you are worshiping on your own, know that God's peace is with you just the same. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, O holy God, you are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things. Through the prophet, you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. He is your light, shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your Spirit, bless us and this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved in the bread, in the wine, Jesus is present for you. Receive and be fed. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, God, the creator, strengthen you, Jesus, the beloved, fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.